If I had to summarize our time at Isla Mujeres, I think I would have to say it's a place of beautiful, breathtaking sunsets and butt-clenching, precarious weather. It's one or the other. Other folks might envision Isla Mujeres and the Cancun area as a place for partying out on the boats or tequila tasting or ceviche. And it is, but as a person here on a boat, I can also summarize that it's been a place of fiberglassing. Sanding and fiberglassing, Choco. Mm. Hi, Crumpling. Mm. So this, of course, is not a surprise. I'm not saying it to complain or as if it was something unexpected, but just to reflect on the realities of the time we've spent here at Isla Mujeres and the realities of a project boat, of course. weather had passed, it was time to jack up the wind vane with a halyard, and we had clamped the wind vane down already with its metal posts, but it needed some extra support. Originally, the Aries wind vane can come with a metal pipe, L-shaped metal pipe supports that clamp down with two sets of clamps on each. Uh, of course, we didn't have that, so we didn't have shaped stainless steel bar. So instead, Robbie found some scrap carbon fiber windsurf sail posts to be the extra support. Lucky for us, we were able to break up the ongoing boat projects with a cool treat. So we got ice cream here, delivered <laughs> delivered fresh in the anchorage, hey. and internet. Yeah, uh, looking uh, forward to this. Uh, Thank you. We need four melts. Oh yeah, don't worry, they ain't gonna last long. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna last. We're gonna eat them. <laughs> delivered by our lovely neighbors who make it on board their sailboat means that it's delicious and it arrives super frozen. No, I'm lactose intolerant, so what it? Mm. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. Mm. We borrowed a battery-operated grinder from our other boat neighbors and cleared off two places for the extra wind vane supports. Then we had a good old-fashioned epoxy hoedown. Then a good old fashioned sanding hootenanny. My sanding cut short because of the rain, and I guess we'll just have to sit and eat some ice cream. It's never been this calm since I've been here. Today is actually the calmest day. It's pretty calm, eh? And then finally, a cleaning and covering up the fiberglass with two-part white paint, which was a little more challenging than usual with the waves of passing boat traffic even this early in the morning.
I was able to buy some 6mm rope on the island to set the wind vane up, but I knew that this line would be much too stretchy to actually run the vane properly. With the help of several diagrams for the Aries wind vane that I found online, I was able to run the line through and to see more or less how things would function. Like, I've never had a complete wind vane before, so I was just itching with fiberglass to see how it worked. Now we would only need to make a pin-type attachment point on the tiller, gather a small amount of chain to make the adjustable attachment points on the line, and then to more permanently attach the blocks. After saving up a tiny bit of money and waiting several weeks for the shipment from the UK to arrive, we received an engine part. We would now be replacing the old diesel lift pump, which was spewing fuel into our bilge. I had used so many rags soaking up oil and diesel in the bilge because of this leak. the same. Yeah, practically identical. The only, the only difference is the lever. Is the lever to pump the, f the fuel. The cam might f go over the edge, you know. You can see that this is where the cam. Mm -hmm. Where it touches. I can see rubbing. Yeah, because if you put them side by side, oof is going to be just, just the cam. I don't want sandpaper or anything. It's mostly just a cleaning job. These are softer, they press better, and hopefully they make a better seal. Can I have another one too? This one goes on this side. The gasket had gone on this one for sure. Okay, now that's the question of putting it back in. Is that hooky thing supposed to hook on something inside? No, it's supposed to like push up against. I went in too smoothly. I, I have a feeling the lever is too short on this pump. Okay. The cam's not even gonna fucking touch it or it's gonna slip. Because the angle of this needs to be changed. <sighs> Change slightly. So now I, I kind of know why these uh, fuel tubes. In, in these engines all break because you kind of have to manhandle them into place and then over time they crack. Until the zip tie. The zip Until tie basically goes at the... At okay. The... Right at the zip tie. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Well, now I'm just gonna get diesel out of my mouth. Now I know what it tastes like. Flavor that Robbie knows well. Is it siphoned? In? Yeah, I think it's primed. I'm going. We have a fairly big dinghy problem. It's not easy to get dinghies where we are, of course. Maybe we could build one, but even that, we've been looking into that and we don't have the materials. So we've got to fix this dinghy as best as we can. Any other, if we go and buy another kayak, they're just gonna have cracks in the bottom. We've seen ads for dinghies with similar repairs on the bottom. So we're gonna try this, this version. Thanks to the comments in one of the last videos, actually I had a suggestion from a viewer about 
doing the repair this way. We had tried with a bit of plastic before, but now we're gonna, we're gonna, we got a hold of a blowtorch. High density polyethylene, HDPE, is used in a large variety of products. But one item that we had on board that was the perfect candidate for the job was this cracked bucket. We had to lift up the dinghy immediately after each trip to shore because the cracks were growing daily, despite my application of 5200 sealant. What was blocking? There's still something blocking it. <laughs> Way to bend your neck. We're about to do work. Yeah, well, they're all letting in walk. Water. They are all letting in. You can see it's a weight dri distribution problem. It's like the whole back end, the rear of the dinghy is all like cracking from all the weight when you're sitting in the canoe is always at the back and the plastic needed to be reinforced. If anybody working at New Canoe <laughs> wants to improve their dinghies, their new canoe, they can like really reinforce the plastic near the stern. Well, the whole bottom. And the whole bottom in general. It can mean double the thickness of the rest of the kayak. Yeah. I clean the area with rubbing alcohol, but you gotta be mindful of letting that dry thoroughly before busting out the torch. So it's hard to see the flame. Choco, back up. Kind of, on a, on an ice box before. You've done ice box repair, okay? Yeah. Let's see if that's it. Hold this. Where do I plug it? First, we tried applying real big patches, and then realized that we would only really be able to control the material better with smaller patches. The black HDPE didn't stick properly, so I went back at it with a metal tool to push the plastic together. However, all that cracked apart within about a day, and I tried to apply some mosquito screen as a mesh, but the whole bottom started sagging inwards from the stray blowtorch heat. We've been really struggling putting these patches on the dinghy, these plastic patches. I kind of looked up some YouTube videos of other people doing repairs on kayaks and it's, I, I need something to push, I need like metal staples to push the plastic down. The problem is, is that after the heat is gone, the, the plastic retracts, it kind of shrinks and then it leaves cracks in, in the areas where I've just made the repair. And so you kind of need like some sort of matrix, like a grid, a metal grid. I've seen repairs, other people doing kayak repairs where they put like a metal grate or staples, kind of like sutures, to keep the plastic from shrinking and cracking. I've even melted some plastic on kind of like wax, and even that plastic when you drip it onto the plastic cracks, um, it still, it doesn't stick. We can't get this plastic to stick very well. I've been trying to use some di different techniques and yeah, it's just a f***ing disaster. I'm adding more and more material and the more I add material, the more uh, 
like we can't remove the plastic repairs that we've done without creating gaping holes in the bottom of the kayak. I have to use a blowtorch, like a heat gun or uh, any sort of electrical, like a hot knife. We don't have like a hot knife or uh, like plastic welder or any of those. those things will take several weeks to come in the mail. So back to the blow torching torment, trying to get holes out of the bottom of our kayak. Just gonna try like smaller pieces, uh, kind of the equivalent of if you have like a plastic welder, it, it, it's like a welder with little, um, with little tubes or little sticks of plastic. I try the equivalent, small strips of plastic, going to melt them on. A long pair of tongs worked well to hold the strips and to melt them down into these little puddles or beads, which reminded me of stick welding a bit. But the outcome of all this learning experience did not result in a non-sinking kayak. The final outcome? It's just cracking off. And I think it's because the bottom of the new canoe was simply flexing too much. You know what never fails, though? The wonderful smell of freshly baked solar bread. We filled up on water at the fuel dock and weaved our way out of the anchorage via the tiny, tight pass for no other reason than to go on an adventure. Task number one, water. We did it. Task number two, Fishing. We're obviously preparing his fishing gear. Then, third place is going to be sail. There wasn't supposed to be much wind blowing, which sounded nice for a change, as opposed to giant storms and hurricanes brewing overhead, but not so great for sailing. Perhaps workable for some laid back fishing, though. The mainsail added about half a knot of speed, and now to drag out the jib. And to raise our jib. So we stopped the engine, not because we're making great speed only under sail, but because the engine is getting a little hotter than usual. There was water coming out, right? Yes, there was water coming out when it was on. So we got all set to sail to Cozumel, but the engine is not really participating as usual. <laughs> the little bottle system to catch hot water coming out of the heat exchange, it actually kind of worked. It, it kind of worked as a little uh, engine overheating alarm. It basically filled with steam. A little bit of steam was starting to come through the heat exchanger and out the heat exchange, and it started to make the bottle kind of blow up. I heard a crackling of a bottle sound, and it was the bottle kind of cr cracking open. And in fact, warning us that the the heat exchanger was heating up. It could be as simple as 
There's not enough oil in the engine. I checked the oil level for the left, I'll have to look. Yeah, it could be just because we haven't used the engine for an extended period of time. That's the only thing that's changed. I cleaned the shaft really well. We cleaned the, the prop yesterday. The only thing that has changed is that we ran it longer and we haven't dumped oil into the engine since our trip from Progresso. You checked the oil level, I but checked oil level and it, was good. it looked good. Against the current, because it's a the trip we wanted to make is all against the the most current in this area, the Gulf Stream, and it's a hard trip without an engine. It's one of, we've done it before without an engine on this boat, and we kind of said we don't, we don't want to do it again without an engine, and there's no real reason for us to do it other than for for pleasure. So I don't know, Ravi, if you want to keep on going to Cozumel. I don't think we are. Join us next video to find out where we end up on our attempted journey.